we are asking the question, is this the worst Linux distribution? Now I could keep you in suspense about which distribution I am talking about. I could talk about some of the other distributions that have problems. I could string this out for 20 minutes to keep your interest. Or I could just tell you what it is now and stop being dramatic. So, three, two, one. The West Linux distribution is elementary OS. If you are an elementary developer or fan, then you might want to strap yourselves in because you are in for a bumpy ride. And you don't have to take my word for it, and it isn't necessarily my opinion, although I do agree with a lot of the commentary about elementary. DistroWatch has two tables of results. The one you commonly see on the front page is hit ranking, and that shows how many people are interested enough to click on the link. And elementary scores quite high on that list, as you can see here. The one you don't see very often, unless you go looking for it, are the average ratings. Now, you can look at the average ratings across all distributions, but then you get a load of previously unheard of distributions with 10 out of 10 rankings. Presumably because the developers have given themselves a 10 out of 10 and they've got one ranking, uh, one rating of 10 out of 10. You can make it a little bit better. You can uh, change it to only distributions that have had 10 ratings. And that works a little bit better, but the results are still skewed to smaller distributions where the developer has managed to put the same rating in 10 times. The list I'm looking at is the one where there have been 100 ratings or more for a distribution, and elementary is bottom of that list. There are only 29 distributions in the list, but they're bottom of the list with just 4.9 out of 10. Now, you may look at that list and see that Ubuntu is second bottom, and clearly that isn't a terrible distribution. But look at the average rating, 7.3, and look at the common rating, 10 out of 10. So what that says to me is that Ubuntu is getting a lot of 10 out of 10 ratings, but obviously with it being so widely used, some people don't see it that way, but it's still got a very high rating. Elementary, on the other hand, has the most common rating as 1 out of 10. So why is it rated so badly, and are the ratings justified? For me, when I install a distribution, there are a few things that I am interested in, and I think this is probably the case for a lot of people, especially new users. One, does my hardware work? Two, is the distribution easy to use? Can I navigate around it? Is it buggy? Three, which applications are installed by default? And four, if the applications I have installed by default aren't the ones I want, how easy is it to install other applications? So when it comes to hardware support, there are lots of comments about NVIDIA drivers not working and quite a few about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth's always been a bit hit and miss with uh, Linux, but um, being that elementary is based on Ubuntu, you'd expect Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to work out the box and even NVIDIA drivers, because why wouldn't they if they work for Ubuntu? The distribution itself appears to contain lots of bugs and the App Center is a constant cause of concern with poor performance, limited applications, paid for apps, and constant update issues. I can testify to the fact that the App Center is very limited and you will see updates continually taking place. The little update message flips from side to side like you're trying to catch it. Loading flat packs isn't as easy as it should be, but for those of you who watched my last video, you will hopefully have fallen into the habit of using the command line to install flat packs, as this works across every distribution. Some of the comments are a bit brutal, but this is the internet after all. One comment says, if I had to summarise in one sentence, I'd describe it as an unusable version of Mac OS High Sierra. By today's standards, this looks like an outdated version of Mac OS from 2016. That's not the only thing that comment says, and the main thing to take from that comment is the choice of pre-installed software. I can testify that the email client is virtually unusable, and if you use something like Gmail for your email, then you'll have to actually lower the security settings to get it to work. And the choice of web browser is bizarre. When most of the Linux world uses Firefox, Chromium, or Brave, why on earth are they supplying GNOME browser? And there's no Office Suite in the App Center. So the only way you can load these apps is via Flatpak, and it's not as easy as it should be to load the Flatpaks. So where should the elementary developers go from here? Well, the desktop is still nice, so stick with that, but fix a few of the bugs. Get rid of the App Center, it is functionally useless. Install GNOME Software Center instead and make it easy to load flat packs, but make it optional. And limit the number of paid for apps. If you want to make money out of Linux, do so, but the way you're trying to do it at the moment isn't working for you. You're just getting bad ratings and your distribution is virtually unusable. 
choose common packages as the default options. There's a reason a lot of distributions go with Firefox, Thunderbird, Rhythmbox, VLC and Shotwell. These are all incredibly useful apps. So stick with the fundamentals, make the desktop usable, make the hardware work, make the default applications useful and make it easy to install other applications. If you do that, then you will have a far more successful distribution than the one you've got now and that 4.9 ranking can go up much higher. And that's the end of the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. And if you don't agree with what I've said, leave a comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching.